Well, good morning and God bless you, dear friends. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. And I want to welcome all of our blessed church members, bless God, our entire church family, as well as, of course, all of our dear friends and loved ones here in America and around the world who tune in and participate in our online ministry. We're always glad to have you and may God bless you. Bless the Lord. I want to get right in to this morning's service, but before I do, just one quick announcement. I want to remind everybody about uh, this Friday night, the 12th of June at 7 p.m. We will have a live uh, Facebook Power in the Wind evening, which is going to be a combination of praise and worship along with intercessory prayer. And that's coming up uh, live from our sanctuary the, this Friday evening at uh, 7 p.m. Our amazing praise and worship team will be assembled along with our intercessory team. Praise God. It won't be a public event in the sanctuary, but it will be broadcast online. And the only folks in the sanctuary will be the tech team, the worship team, and the prayer team. Praise God. So just wanted to give you that quick uh, announcement. Let's get right into the message this morning, which I have entitled, Let There Be Light. Let there be light. Now, I'd like to share a story with all of you this morning that I shared many, many years ago, a story that I came across, which absolutely blessed my heart concerning our history. And I want to share it with you this morning and uh, along with fresh thoughts as we speak to what's taking place here in America uh, and, of course, around the world. There's so much going on, and I want to utilize the scriptures, the Word of God, in order to accurately speak uh, to these things as well as you and I members of the body of Christ, the Lord's church in the earth. Praise God. Let me share this story with you, and uh, I pray that it'll bless your heart. On the night of June 20th, 1944, American pilots flying across the Philippine Ocean were returning from a critical and dangerous mission. Now, they were flying in the dark of night, Remember what I've entitled this message, Let There Be Light. They were flying in the dark of night, and they were on their way back to their aircraft carriers and escort ships, American fighter pilots. Now, in the darkness, these aircraft carriers were nearly invisible to the Japanese submarines and bombers that were thick in this area. And this darkness also meant, this darkness also meant that nearly 200 pilots returning from their mission could not see the usually lit small landing lights on the carrier decks that were still many miles away. So, some of these pilots that had no nighttime flying experience began falling into the sea. The naval officers on these waiting in dark carriers were listening to these pilots, and they could hear their desperate cries as they plunged into the water. Finally, Vice Admiral Mark Mitcher on the aircraft carrier Lexington gave his now famous command, turn on the lights. Now, the sailors on board knew it would take only a few enemy submarines to sink their ships if they turned on their lights. If they turned on their lights, they would become easy targets to the enemy by exposing their position. Nevertheless, they followed orders. On that night, June 20th, 1944, Naval Task Force 58 broke with all nighttime security procedures and switched on every light in its entire fleet. In an instant, massive floodlights, running lights, and searchlights cut through the darkness. All of a sudden, there were huge beams of light 
piercing the night. And they could be seen 60 miles out, pointing the way home to the remaining pilots. Admiral Mark Mitcher could have gone down in history, credited with a disaster. But instead, he emerged an American hero who boldly risked thousands of lives, including his own, in order to save hundreds of men. Hundreds of lives, hundreds of living souls made it home safely. For the sake of lives, for the sake of souls, their brave commander was willing to turn on the lights and in so doing exposed their position. In the midst of war and under immediate threat of danger and death, with lives at stake, this courageous American hero commanded, turn on the lights. Now, some of our church family may remember me sharing that story with them many, many years ago, but I want to add some fresh thoughts and a word today to that story to deal with what's taking place in America today and, of course, in around the world. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus said that, Matthew 5, 15 through 16. As you know, as I hope you all know, as Christian believers, we are at war. And the waters that we are sailing into now are deeper and darker than they have ever been. And my friends, I want to tell you this morning they're going to get even deeper and even darker in the coming days, weeks, and months. Much, much deeper, much, much darker. But as believers in Jesus Christ, we are commanded to turn on the lights and expose our position. Yes, it is true. We are surrounded by the enemy. His weaponry and satanic strategies are circling the globe as well as this country now more than ever before. But when lives are at stake and for the sake of souls and for the sake of truth and clarity in the midst of chaos, we must hear the great command of our heavenly commander who shouts out from the very beginning of history right up to this very moment, let there be light. Jesus, our King and Savior, spoke it into the hearts of the multitudes and all of his people right up to the second. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Can you imagine the hearts of those brave American pilots when they saw those glorious and huge beams of light illuminate the nighttime sky and those other lights illuminating the carrier decks to guide them safely in? Oh, that beautiful row of much smaller lights lighting up the landing area on the decks of those carriers. Every light, capture this now, don't miss this. Every light important, every light working together, every light serving men, every light strategically positioned, and each serving a greater purpose to guide others safely home. In the off position, if these lights remained in the off position, none of the above would have been possible. And that story, which is part of our history that I shared with you at the beginning of this message. In the off position, 
those lights, none of the above would have been possible. But in the on and exposed position, when courage and commitment outweigh fear and comfort, life is released and history is made. Missions are accomplished and battle-weary warriors are one step, praise God, closer to home. Now, can you also imagine how the hearts of those other pilots who plunged into the sea before the lights were turned on, can you imagine how they would have felt if those lights had been turned on just a little earlier? My friends, members of the body of Christ, the church and the earth, the time is now. Turn on the lights and expose your position. Let there be light. The Holy Spirit told us through Paul something so profoundly necessary for us to hear and embrace in Ephesians 5. For you, speaking to you and I, members of the body of Christ, the church and the earth, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Now, there is something biblically amazing about this historical and courageous event from 1944. The fact of the massive floodlights and searchlights, as well as the much smaller running lights, all working together in their strategic position, made the safe return and saved lives possible. But in these different sized lights from this story, the searchlights, the huge beaming lights, and the little lights on the carrier deck, the big ones, the medium ones, the small ones, in all of these different sized lights, we catch a glimpse of what God tries to teach us and remind us of every day and night as it pertains to our own light, the light that we have been given. The Bible teaches us, first of all, and we are certainly in this time frame. Listen to this in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Praise God. Now listen, in Genesis chapter 1, we see this. Remember, I'm re referring to this moment in history which so metaphorically and prophetically speaks to you and I when they turned on the big lights, the medium lights, the smaller lights. It speaks to us. L listen to this from Genesis chapter 1. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. You see, there is both a natural and a spiritual reason for these daily and nightly lights. We see in this all the lights of heaven, the sun, the moon, the stars, and they are all the work of God's hands, his divine workmanship. Ephesians 2 tells us that we, you and I, the members of his body, are also his workmanship. It tells us, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. The sun, the moon, the stars that God ordained and set in place are his workmanship. You and I, too, are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. In the beginning, God created the lights and each of them serve a purpose. Different sizes, different positions, 
different strengths and varying degrees of illumination, yet each one perfect and necessary and serving, amazingly enough, mankind. God didn't need them. God didn't need the sun, the moon, or the stars. They're all there, perfect and necessary, varying degrees of strength and illumination, all there set in place, amazingly enough, though, serving mankind. God didn't need them. They're all for us, and they are for clarity. Why are they there? Why did Jesus tell us, you are the light of the world? Why did he put these lights in the sky, in the heavenlies? Why? They are for clarity, illumination, distinction precision, guidance, the distinction of times, the distinction of day and night, and knowing quite obviously the difference between the light and the darkness, the day and the night. They're there for the, for the discernment and the flow of the seasons. They affect weather, tides. They're set with distinct and awesome purpose. Think about it. Certain times and certain seasons and certain times of the 24-hour cycle, they each require certain strategies and approaches based upon the light that God has created, his workmanship. And then he calls us, you are the light of the world. In times of war, in times of peace, in living, in sowing the seed, in harvest time, the farmer's who sow the seed, fully understand their use. And even more wonderfully, these lights of heaven were made to serve. Listen now. These lights of heaven were the workmanship of God set in the heavenlies to serve mankind for distinction, accuracy, guidance, and, pre and precision. And listen, they were made to serve and they do it faithfully, without fail, and always no matter what. Did you hear that? Every light that God put in the sky, sun, moon, stars, he decreed that they're there. They have a purpose. What is the purpose? To serve mankind. And what's wonderful about these lights of heaven, keeping in mind Jesus said, you are the light of the world. They were made to serve. Ready? They do it faithfully, constantly, without fail, and always, no matter what. The changing economy does not govern or change the faithfulness of these lights or their purpose or their mission. The political realities of this nation and all other nations does not govern or change the faithfulness of these lights or their purpose or their mission. The most difficult, dark, and heart-wrenching events that ever manifest upon the earth does not govern or change the faithfulness of these lights or their purpose and mission. God created them for a purpose and they do it faithfully. They shine in their position and in their varying degrees of strength, always and without fail, always there always faithful, always serving, and fulfilling their God-ordained function. Now, you and I, according to the word of God and the very message of Jesus Christ, are set as lights in this world to serve God and his purposes. We are set as lights in this world to bear witness to the truth, to bring the illumination of clarity and the elimination of shadows and darkness and chaos and confusion. Capture that again. We are set as lights in this world to bear witness to the truth, to bring the illumination of clarity and the elimination of shadows and darkness and chaos and confusion. The question is, are we as faithful in our place and position and strength, large or small, as lights, as the sun and the moon and the stars are in theirs. Always there, always constant, always faithful, regardless of events in the earth. 
regardless of the best of times, the worst of times, the ugliest of times, always there, always in position, always shining in their strength faithfully, serving God, serving mankind. Are we? Jesus said we too are his workmanship and set as lights. Are we faithful in our place and position in constancy, large or small, whatever the varying degree of our light and, and or position may be as they are in theirs? God teaches us in Genesis that these lights rule the day and the night. Whether it be day or night, we are not victims. We are not caught up in chaos. Who? The church. There will always be light for the church. There will always be light in our dwellings. I want to say that again. There will always be light in our dwellings, the church. Listen to this in Exodus chapter 10. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Are you capturing this? God turned off the lights. Moses, he said, Moses, stretch your hand toward the heaven and, and, and decree this darkness. Stretch out your hand toward heaven that there'll be darkness over the land of Egypt. The darkness so heavy, it'll be felt. And Moses did it. And there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. And they didn't see one another, nor did any rise from his place for three days. What a slap in the face to the sun god that Egypt worshipped, the god of this earth, the god of this world. What a slap in the face that that which they so depended on, that which they worshipped, that which they heralded. And now Moses, the man of God, obeying God. Moses, a light in the world, a light in his generation, obeying God in his lifetime. And what happens? Thick darkness so heavy, they, they, they felt it. Now they can't see. Nobody can even rise up from their place. They can't move. They're paralyzed. But what does the scripture say? But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings, praise God. Listen, we are not overshadowed by events. The church will never be overshadowed by events. Yes, the church is in a season of having to examine itself. Yes, the church is in a season in, in need of prayer and repentance and rending our heart and not our garments. Yes, the prophets speak to this. Yes, the patriarchs speak to this. Yes, Jesus speaks to this in the apostles. Yes, cover to cover, we recognize that we are in a season to examine and let judgment begin in the house of God. But I've got news for you. The church is not going to go out of existence in some Laodicean fizzle. That's not going to happen. The church is the pillar and ground of truth in the earth. Every time God told his prophets to tell the people to repent, what did he say afterwards once they did? Power, glory, restoration, blessing, impact, light. Hallelujah. The church, I say again, is not going to fizzle out in some Laodicean fizzle. We're not just going to take a back seat and fall away. We're not overshadowed by events. Once there is understanding, repentance, once we get before God and let God do whatever he needs to do in our lives individually and ultimately corporately, which this season has been specifically ordained of God for that. But I can tell you right now, we are not going to go out in some lukewarm, begging every single step of the way moment. No, no, no. The church is the pillar and ground of truth, the light of the world, the power of God by the Spirit of God. We're not overshadowed. We weren't then, we're not now, and we won't be. Why? Because we are God's people, and we've been given authority and purpose and ministry. Jesus told us, then God made these lights. The, the Genesis, I meant to say, which is the Lord speaking. Genesis told us, God makes these lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. 
God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Every Christian believer has been given this authority, this power, and this ministry. You, hallelujah, you are the light of the world to rule the day and the night. Rule, R-U-L-E. You are the light of the world to rule the day and the night with truth, clarity, discernment, and power by the Spirit of the living God. And you are that which the darkness cannot conquer or overwhelm. Are you hearing me? You are the light that this darkness cannot conquer or overwhelm. Jesus said it. You are the light of the world. In the brightest and clearest moments, you are the light of the world. In the brightest and clearest moments, God's light shines with purpose and power and distinction and authority. In the darkest moments, in the meanest moments, in the most horrific nighttime moments, God's light shines with purpose and power and distinction and authority. I have a message for the world today. Don't think that the church is in retreat. Don't think that the church is running with their tail between their legs. Don't think for one second you've pushed the Lord's church up against the wall. We understand our wilderness experiences. We know what God says and does in those experiences. And we know how we emerge out of those wilderness experiences. Glory to God. And this is for every believer and Christian believer also to recognize and walk in. The church is the pillar and, the, and ground of truth. We are the light of the Lord in the earth. Praise God. We are not retreating. We are not running. Don't think for a second you have our back up against the wall. We discern what all of this is about. We discern where the, where the, where these weapons are coming from. We discern who and what they're targeting. We understand the plight of nations. We understand the plight and challenge of this nation. We completely discern it. We completely understand it. And I want you to know something. The light that is the church has been given to rule. So you can throw all your political and social dialogue all over the place. Lying media, lying politicians, lying socialists, lying all of them. Let me tell you, throw it out there en masse. Throw it like Frisbees. It's bouncing off the shield of faith held by the church because the church is the very power and will of God in the earth. Praise God. And I'm so thankful to be able to say to every one of you Christian believers today, this is for every one of you to recognize and walk in. For anyone listening, listen, for anyone listening who feels they're not important, Christian believers, you, you, I don't know, do you have a, a self-esteem issue or, or, or you don't think you're important or significant or you don't think you're big enough or bright enough to make a difference? I came online for you to get in touch with and fall in love with the God who tells us in his word that he made the lesser lights to rule the night. There you go. All of you who think, what position do I have? What light do I have? I'm unknown. I'm nameless. I'm faceless. So am I. Who knows I exist? I live in uh, Virginia, for goodness sakes. I'm nobody, but I've been given a light. And whether it's the smallest light on the carrier deck, whether it's a medium light or one of the huge searchlights, we've been given a light. But I want you to get in touch with and fall in love with the fresh, the God who tells us in Genesis that he made the lesser lights to rule the night. Don't you for one second let the enemy back you up against the wall and, and, and infer or, or accuse or insinuate to your heart and mind that you don't have significance, you don't have power, you don't have impact. Nothing could be further from the truth. Glory to God. Listen, those in my story in the beginning, which is a true historical American story, those huge beaming floodlights and searchlights on that dark summer night in our nation's history lit up the sky. Lit up the sky. The big beaming floodlights, yes. 
The big beaming searchlights, yes, they lit up the sky on that dark summer night to get those pilots moving in the right direction. But it was those smaller and perfectly placed running lights on the decks of those carriers that guided those pilots safely on board and back home again to complete their mission and to their families. Different lights, different strengths, different positions, all working together to serve God and man. The scripture says that these lights were created to rule, to rule. The scriptures also teach us through this that the best and most honorable way of ruling is by serving faithfully in our intended position and purpose to give light and to do good right there where you are, your place, your dwelling, your community, your state, your nation, your ministry, your church, that the scriptures teach us by God telling us the sun, the moon, and the stars constantly faithful, no matter what's going on ever, there they are shining, that we too are his workmanship, we too are lights of the world. And so what do we see? Faithfulness. And the best and most honor, faithfulness where? In lights designed and decreed and created to rule the day and the night, the darkness. And the best and most honorable way of ruling is by serving faithfully. Serve faithful in your intended position and purpose. Give light and do good. Now you may ask, how can I let my light shine? How can I turn my light on? Well, let's, t let's take a close look again at the word of God for some answers. Psalm 4 tells us, there are many who say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart more than in the season that their grain and wine increased. In other words, he's saying, there's more gladness in my heart where I am than when the world is prospering or unfolding their agenda or seemingly coming in strength and increase. Listen to what he says. There are many who say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart, more than in the season that their grain and wine increase. He's speaking to unbelievers, the world. And he says, I will both lie down in peace and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Let the Lord's countenance be reflected in yours. In heavy times, we can express light, distinction, and gladness of heart. And our gladness is greater than the world's. Even when they experience increase, they do not have the gladness given to God's people. And even in war, conflict, chaos, or struggle, he says, because of the countenance of God upon us, we both lie down and sleep. Hallelujah. This is an expression and reflection of light that many people that exist in the shadows and the darkness need to see shining brightly upon their lives today. Let this light be in you. Let your light so shine before men because these worldlings, these people without God, these people without hope, Every one of them need to see this light shining upon their lives today. The light of the very countenance of God shining in and upon and through the members of the body of Christ in the earth. Psalm 119 tells us, verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now this light indicates clear, precise, and perfect direction and guidance with people living in and existing in and for some barely surviving in the throngs of confusion and the unknown how great a light to shine the great light of the leading of the holy spirit and the perfect truth of his word past present and future in the lives of all those who know 
Jesus Christ as Lord. In other words, the word of God's truth is upon your life. His word is a lamp to your feet, a light to your path. You have clear, precise, and perfect direction, guidance, and counsel. Look at all the people out there living and existing and barely surviving in the throngs of confusion and darkness and the unknown. Let that light given to you, the word of the living God, shine. Oh, let it shine, the perfect truth of his word upon all of those who are in great need, existing in the darkness and in the shadows of this light that God has placed upon your life. Also in, in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, we read this, verse 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Listen to me, I have to say something, but it's true. It sounds harsh, but it's true. People in darkness and without Christ are blind. People in darkness and without Christ are blind. It's as simple as that. People in darkness and without Christ are blind. It's as simple as that. And all who live in this darkness, even though they are physically alive, they are dead in their sin. And they are under the influence of the devil, the liar, the spirit of this age, the mindset of the world. Think of it. Millions and millions and millions and millions of people shrouded in darkness. And Jesus reminds us that he is the light of the world and that because he is in you, you were once darkness but now you are light in the world, he says, so walk as children of light. What an immeasurable blessing. Those of you who follow Jesus, he said, you follow me, you're light. You'll never be in darkness. What a blessing. Those of you who follow Jesus will never again, never again, never again be in darkness. You're not now and you never will again be forever. Hallelujah. You're not in darkness now, and you never will be in darkness again forever. Praise God. Glory to God. Romans 13 tells us the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Today, think of it, look at your headlines, look at the world, look at the current crisis in America. People are being pounded by the enemy's arsenal and weaponry, deception, hate, injustice, corruption, violence, abuse, addiction, slander, poverty, division and bitterness, and so much more at every conceivable dimension of society. What possible light? could we offer in the face of all this satanic onslaught and darkness? What possible light could we bring to that? Well, the word tells us the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. In other words, hear me, essential to your light shining brightly essential to your light to shine brightly, be it large or small. Whatever its position is to strike no bargain with this world, to embrace no partnership with evil and allow no negotiation with the spirit of this age and its satanic system. Why? Because we cast off the works of darkness and we put on the armor of light. We cast off the works of darkness and we put on the armor of light. Glory to God. And also, in the most, let me expose the most grievous darkness and reality of all the reality of sin, people, multitudes, 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 millions upon millions upon untold, millions under this curse. Not 
I mean, just barely surviving in a world full of false hopes, full of false narratives, and full of false gods. The multitude out there, you see them, don't you? Looking for a cause, looking for an answer, looking for meaning, looking for purpose. What great light can we turn on in the face of this grievous reality? The reality of the curse of sin, where they are lost in darkness and without hope. Once again, the light, the light, the light of God's word tells us clearly. And we see it in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves as your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light, who has shined it in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Let there be light. Turn on the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the very knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And where is this light to be found in this earth? Well, the next sentence in 2 Corinthians 4 tells us, verse 7, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Hallelujah. Where is this light to be found? In you and in me. In us. Hallelujah. Let me close with this to read a last scripture to you and then a few thoughts. Listen to this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Listen now. Still your hearts and listen to the word of the Lord. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Now listen, my friends. One day, the Lord is going to shut off the lights. One day, the Lord is going to shut off the sun, the moon, and the stars. And he is going to remove the church, the light of the world from this earth. We will suffer much. We will suffer much in the midst and in the meantime, leading right up to it. Don't have this escapism mentality that 
Paul the Apostle could be beheaded. Peter could be crucified upside down. We could have brethren all over the world right up until this very day suffering for their Christianity, being persecuted, tortured, and martyred. Don't have this arrogant mentality, but that somehow you will be removed from suffering. We won't be. We're not appointed to wrath, but we will deal with difficulty and harshness and great trouble in the earth. One day though, one day, the Lord is going to remove the church. And he is going to shut off the sun, the moon, and the stars. And he is going to remove the church, the light of the world from this earth. And then it is too late for the inhabitants of this earth. It's too late, too late for the inhabitants of the earth. But that day has not yet come. And until that day, when God does, what he is absolutely and inevitably going to do, shutting off the lights, removing the only hope and light that the world ever had when he removes the church from the earth, when he shuts off all the heavenly constellations and they're in utter darkness, a darkness so deep they can't see each other, they can't rise, they feel it, and it's too late. Until that day, when God does what he is absolutely and inevitably going to do, according to his word, what do we do until that day? We remain in position. See the sun? See the moon? See the stars? It's a message. We remain in position. The church, the ground and pillar of truth. And let the light of our God and his gospel shine in upon and through us his people in the earth. Let me say one more time, the church is not retreating. The church is not on the run. The church may be in a time of examination. We might be in a season of a wilderness where we where judgment begins in the house of God. Time for churches and, and, and ministries and expressions to clean up their act and get it back to that which is biblical and not performance driven. Yes, all those things. However, I'm speaking to the church in the earth. God has a people. God has a people. We're not in retreat. We're not on the run. We're not running with our tail between our legs. And no socialism, no lying politician, no lying talking head in mainstream media, none of them. No liars, no deception, no weaponry, no gross darkness, no chaos, no confusion has us on the run. We are not going out in a Laodicean fizzle. The light of God shines brightly in and upon and through the church. And until God does what he is inevitably going to do, according to his word, my friends, remain in position. You are the church, the ground and pillar of truth. Repentance, yes. Getting our hearts right, yes. But do you think that's the only message? It's not. After that, God demonstrates what he does to those who come, those who return, those who repent, those who acknowledge him in his season of chastisement. Power comes, light comes, anointing comes, the glory of God. Arise, shine, Isaiah 60 verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold... The darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Glory to God, my friends. Let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men. Praise God. God bless you. Have a safe and blessed day. Stay in the word. Stay in prayer. In Jesus' name. We're on the front lines. We're the ones that make the difference through that which ultimately is all that will ever matter. The word of God. The truth of his word. Jesus Christ. God bless you.